A very good morning to all of you. Today's topic for discussion is endodontic mishaps. According to Walton, endodontic mishaps are unwanted or unforeseen circumstances during root canal therapy that can affect the prognosis. According to Ingle, it's the unfortunate occurrences that happen during treatment, some owing to inattention to detail, others totally unpredictable. Classification. First one is related to access opening of the pulp space. But the second one related to canal shaping and cleaning. And third one related to obturation. First one, the which one is related to the access opening of the pulp space. Under this, treating the wrong tooth, incomplete removal of caries, access opening through full coverage restoration, inability to locate extra canals, that means missed the canal orifices, and atrogenic perforations, that is the cervical perforations. Treating the wrong tooth, that's arriving at proper diagnosis and designing proper treatment planning before we are going to start the endodontic treatment. Second one is the incomplete removal of caries. That means all caries must be removed from a tooth receiving endodontic treatment. Secondary caries is an endodontically, in an endodontically treated tooth ultimately leads to coronal leakage and ultimate endodontic failure. Complete removal of the caries process should be the first principle of access opening before focusing on canal orifice location. You can see from these slides. And the third one is the access opening through full coverage restoration. When a patient presents himself or herself with an existing crown in the tooth that is planned for endodontic treatment, the best solution is to remove the crown and proceed with the endodontic treatment. With the crown in place, access opening becomes extremely difficult. Orientation of the birth and maintaining the parallelism according to the long axis of the tooth is very important. And another category is missed canal orifices. And the causes are lack of knowledge pertaining to root canal anatomy, configuration, and its variations. And improper access and not observing the basic cavity design features incomplete de-roofing of the pulp chamber and incomplete removal and shaping of the lateral walls of the pulp chamber. How can you prevent this? A good periapical radiographs pre-operatively and during root canal cleaning and shaping can prevent uh, endronic mishaps. Observe radiographs under magnification and multiple, you can take multiple radiographs in varying angulations. Use DG16 Explorer or size 060810 ISO K file instruments to locate the four phases. And the next one is atrogenic cervical perforations. Cervical perforations usually occur in the form of gouging, which leads to crown perforation caused by directing the burr non-parallel to the long axis of the tooth and management of non percal cervical perforations. Primary protocol, protocol is hemorrhage control with 1 is to 50,000 epinephrine followed by perforation repair with MTA. And how can you prevent it? One must study the crown root angulations before proceeding with the treatment. Care must be taken in not removing healthy dentin and undermining the crown tooth structure, which might result in a perforation. And management of cervical perforation in the percussion area. Once there is a flooding of pulp into the blood into the pulp chamber, one must suspect a perforation 
lightly into periodontal tissues or into the percussion area. And you can confirm it with the radiograph. Electronic apex locators are also useful in differentiating a bleeding canal from a perforation. An MTA, that is the mineral trioxide aggregate, is the material of choice for sealing perforations. And how can you prevent it? Study the preoperative radiographs. Access per penetration for depth and angulation should be confirmed and straight you should always uh, do a straight line access in access in all access cavity preparation. It's the cardinal rule. And procedural errors in canal shaping and cleaning. The common procedural errors encountered during cleaning and shaping are as follows. Canal blockage and ledge formation, deviation from normal canal anatomy, separation of instruments, and obstruction by previous obturating materials. Canal blockage and ledge formation. Blockage of a canal is basically because of the apical pushing of dentinal debris, which has been removed during shaping and cleaning of the root canal. How can you prevent this canal blockage? Always use the smaller sized instrument first. Use the instruments in a sequential order. Always pre-curve stainless steel hand instruments. Use reproducible reference points and stable silicone stoppers on instruments while cleaning and shaping. Use copious amounts of virgins and always work in a wet canal and recapitulate repeatedly. It's a very important step. Then dispose of the used instruments suitably when there are visible sign wear on the instrument. And what is lead? It's an artificially created deviation of the root canal wall that can, that can prevent the passage of an instrument to the apex of an otherwise patent canal. Causes of ledging. Not extending the access cavity to get straight line access, incorrect assessment of the root canal curvature, forcing and driving the instrument into the canal using a non curved stainless steel instrument that is too large for a curved canal. Failing to use the instruments in a sequential order and overusing of the reaming action inadequate irrigation and or lubrication during instrumentation, attempting to prepare calcified canals, removing root filling materials during endodontic retreatment and due to apical blockage. And how can you prevent the ledge formation? The preoperative radiograph is taken to assess and anticipate unusual root canal curvature Patency of the canal should be maintained throughout the cleaning and shaping procedure, recapitulation with smaller instruments, and work passively without forcing the instruments into the canal, and work sequentially by increasing the sizes of the instruments without jumping to large instruments. And the deviation from normal canal anatomy, and that is sipping. What is sipping? Sipping is defined as the apical transportation of a curved canal caused due to improper shaping technique. You can see sipping in these radiographs. And what is transportation? If the instrument remains within the confines of the root canal, the elliptic preparation will produce internal transportation of the foramen and if the instrument is outside the confines of the root canal, it will produce external transportation of the foramen. And what is elbow? Elbow is the narrowest portion of the zip canal. A zip canal is apical to elbow and usually obturation ends at the elbow. And how can you manage it? Prevention is the best form of management of canal transportation. Adhering to the principles of root canal instrumentation and appreciation of the canal anatomy and instrument dynamics. Thermoplastized obturation techniques are the preferred methods of obturation. Can I, in instrument separation in the canal. 
Instruments separate or break only when they are used incorrectly or overused. The prognosis and management of a separated instrument inside a canal are dependent upon the level of instrument separation in the canal. That is, uh, whether it is coronal, middle, or apical third, the size of the instrument, the degree of infection beyond the level of the separation, and the operator's skill, and patient motivation and decision of the future course treatment. And how can you prevent it? Create a glide path and patency with small hand files and always ensure straight line access and good finger rest and use a light touch on the instrument. Never push hard. You can see a separated instrument in the canal and treatment. You have to remove the instrument. Uh, you have to train how to remove the instrument from the uh, canal. Then bypassing the instrument and making it a part of the obturation and surgical intervention in the form of hemisection of the root or root resection in roots with apical third separation. And the fourth one is the obstruction from previous obturating materials. When retreatment of a previously endodontically treated tooth becomes necessary, the filling material must be removed or bypassed. Gutta percha. How can you remove gutta percha? Gutta percha and sealer can be removed by the application of mechanical force in the form of instrumentation. Heat to save and soften the gutta percha. Solvents, ultrasonics, and combinations of the above. You can see how you can remove the gutta percha from the canal. Procedural errors with obturation. Underfilling of the gutta pacha, overfilling of the gutta pacha. Underfilling of gutta pacha, the inability to see the master cone to estimated full working length, mainly due to the loss of working length as a result of the packing dentinal mud into the pulp space without recapitulation or insufficient irrigation. The use of small sized files to dislodge the packed dentinal mud and irrigation with sodium hypochlorate frequently is recommended. Overfilling of gutta percha, shaping of canal beyond the working length, instrumenting beyond the constriction during root canal therapy should not routinely happen if the basic biological and mechanical principles are observed as cardinal rules. Other procedural errors, aspiration or ingestion of the endodontic instruments, High power suction with rubber dam application is a must and clinical disaster ending up in life-threatening situations or ending up in the need for major surgery to remove the instrument. So you should be very careful.